Hello, this is Donna. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing component caning. Now component caning is something that I came up with a long, long time ago. And the reason was uh, I wanted to make a certain kind of flower. Now this is the actually a piece from that time, which is so long ago. And I wanted to make a certain kind of flower with overlapping petals and I wanted it to look a certain way and I thought about building a cane that way and I realized that I would never get this kind of crispness um, because by the time you make the cane and then you reduce it there's distortion and it wouldn't look the same and I wanted it to look very I wanted a very particular look to the flower and uh, being you know, I have my lazy side. I thought, well, you know, why don't I just make a single petal? Make one petal and then reduce it when necessary and cut thin slices and arrange them as I want it and roll them in and you've made a flower. So here are some of the canes from that original years ago time. These are canes that I made, the original ones. And I think this might be the original star as well. So I keep these and I use them still. Okay. Yeah, what I really wanted to create was the feeling where I'm down here looking through the flowers at a night sky. And that's where this came from. And you know, I really like it. I still like it, I'm glad. I hung on to this piece. Here's a pin. It's a small pin. No stars, but shows you the same kind of thing. And as a matter of fact, it's probably a better example of the flower. But today, we are not going to make flowers. We are going to make leaves. Now let's talk quickly about backgrounds. This is metal foil. You guys know what foil is? It's this, this stuff, foil. It's actually a chemical coating on mylar. What happens here? This is the mylar. The chemical coating is on the back. And when you press it to clay, shiny side up, right side up, and you stroke it and you apply the heat from your hands a bit and then you rip it off, you leave the foil. Then I'm sure there are a jillion demonstrations on the internet of just this. This is not leaf, it is foil. All right, the thing about this is that it is a metal, and you, we know metal does not form a permanent bond with clay. So you can quite easily remove it. You see? Um, it's on black clay. So, and also, to, be, to tell you the truth, it's just too shiny for this particular use. I can hardly see any details in the leaves because the background is so distracting. So I wouldn't use it for this purpose. Now here's another gold finish, but this time I've used acrylic paint. I like this iridescent rich gold quite a bit. And the application's really simple. I just dab it with my fingers and then I let it dry. Now, acrylic paint is, it's great on clay. But what you always have to remember is acrylic paint has a curing time as well. So you can't, you don't want to make this gold painted sheet too far in advance because what will happen is over time, the paint will cure. When I say cure, I mean dry. And once it is completely dried on the raw clay, it's no longer sticking to the raw clay. The clay underneath is raw, but the paint has now decided, nah, I don't have to stick to you. And so it's really not that useful at that time because it, it'll just peel or chip off. So you wanna make your gold or your painted sheet, and you want to use it within a reasonable period of time, I would say 
a couple days, maybe as much as a week, maybe as long as a week. But that too depends on what paint you are using because they're not all the same. This is what we're going to use today. Now here's another option. Of course, it's just a Skinner blend from copper to black. I put it in the oven, walked away. I didn't come back, fished it out when it was cold. And lo and behold, it had all of these little bubbles. The surface was not totally flat and totally fair. And, you know, I, that was my fault because the way to avoid that is when it's hot and it's still on that tile, place another tile on top and apply pressure and push and let it cool that way. And then it will completely flatten out. So since I missed that window of opportunity, I decided to sand the right side just to show you the difference. So you can see the right is sanded slightly matte, but the surface is smooth, and the left side is shinier, but it features those lumps. Now, when you sand, you have to be careful, of course, because look here, oops, right here. I kind of sanded part of the branch away because it wasn't embedded deep enough. Maybe there wasn't quite enough of it. So when I sanded, I sanded part of it away. And that may happen at various points. That's why it's very important in this process that you totally integrate the clay slices into the background. All right, okay. Now, of course, with this, there will be no sanding because you will sand away the paint. Also, with this, because it's reflective, not as reflective as this. This is like nutsy, cuckoo reflective, so reflective I can't see anything. But here, the surface may be imperfect, but you don't see it. Not the same way you see here, right? You can clearly see that. Little lumps and bumps. Here, you don't really see them. They may be there, but you don't see them. So that's why we're gonna use this. Okay, so that covers the background. Next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna make our leaf cane. I will prepare the parts and I'll be right back. And we are ready to make the leaf. Now, in the example, you can see that the leaf is actually this hunter green to a very bright lime green. Okay, I used this lime and this hunter green to make that leaf. And you know, these are like my two favorite greens. Of course I used that. But when I used it on the piece, I'm not exactly sure that this really yellowy green works as well. I, I, I haven't decided. I can, you know, clearly you can see the leaves on the gold, but uh, we're going to do something different because I suspect but don't know that maybe this combination is better. And by this combination, see I tested it out, I made one. Uh, I mean a more chalky, more subtle chalky green and the same hunter. Now this is not as bright to the eye but because there's so much white in it, I think it will show up better. And here, I mean, here is the cane that I'm going to make. All right, but we're together and we'll see together if I'm right or wrong. Now, I've already made my Skinner blend and I'm going to roll this sheet thin and I'll put doesn't really matter. I'll just put this edge on the rollers and roll it down through like setting number four. Okay, so let's just roll it up tight.
from this very chalky green to the hunter green. Dog fur. Okay, so I made it just a bit plumper. It seemed to be very thin, but I don't have to use the whole thing. Uh, the way we use these canes, we just use so little of them at the time that, you know, you can use, I could use this whole thing, but then I'd have to store it. And by keeping it this way, maybe I can use it for something else. Maybe I can use it in a spear cane or something. So I'm gonna set this aside. Okay, so here we go. This cane is so simple to make it. I have taught this class so many times and you wanna know something? It always works. This has been one of the classes I have taught where there have, I don't think I've ever had a student fail at this. All right. I've got my four wedges. Now each of the wedges is reshaped and you're gonna take one of the flat plane of the wedge, put it against your fingers like that. And then with your thumbs, you push the clay from the perimeter up toward the point of the wedge, like so. Flip it over and repeat. Take that clay and push it up to the point of the wedge. Like so. So the wedge is now like this. You can see where I took the perimeter of the dark hunter green and I pushed it up toward the point of the wedge. Okay, so quickly I'm going to do the rest of them. Like so. And you can see that you don't have to be very, very careful with this process either. Just get the job done, but it's not really necessary for this line, for instance, to be perfectly straight. No, it's not really going to matter. Okay. Ta-da. Okay, so they're all done. So I'm just going to flatten each one just a bit with my fingers, like so. And then I'm going to stack them or position them so all the wedges, the reshaped wedges are aligned like this. Okay, so you'll see that's what it's gonna look like. One side is gonna be the perimeter color and the other, these. this is the point, the original point of the wedge. Now I'm going to squeeze Okay. I'm going to take my acrylic rod and flatten it about a bit. And let's just cut it in half. Now, this time I'm not going to cut these ends off because you know what? Sometimes the most interesting leaves are the ones that feature the ends. It happens sometimes. Now I'm going to put them together. And you know what? I think I'm going to flip them like so. Oops, I didn't mean to flip it that way. 
but like this. And the reason why is, you see this, the way this meets in the middle here? Well, I would really rather have some of this dark green in the center. And the only way for me to get the dark green is to do this. Flip it over. And this is one of those canes that is really not fussy. Okay. I just made it fussy right there. All right, so let's continue. Now, this is what I've got so far. I'm going to reduce it again. And you know, if I were using two colors that had very, very little contrast, then I would probably have to stop, right? Because you, I would lose all the details if I kept going. But because I'm using this very chalky green, I think I can go further. And still see the little teeth in the leaf. All right, so I am gonna stop here because I'm also going to be reducing it and making it quite a bit smaller. Now, this is a fine square cane. Let's turn it into a leaf. Pinch. Flip it over, pinch. When I first made these, I had made a ton of pendants and things, and I can't remember exactly where I was. Maybe, maybe it was in Lexington, or I can't remember. Anyway, a bunch of us were there, and Nan Roche was there, and Nan is so sweet. She uh, came up and she saw all the things that I had been doing, these, uh, or very similar to this. And she said, Donna, are you painting on clay now? And I thought, okay, I did it. I fooled Nan. Because these tend to be pretty painterly, which I also like. Okay, so there is the leaf. I like this one. Excellent. Now, I've wrapped this leaf in gold, as you can see. It's, it's just an option. Um, I happen to like it, so I'm going to wrap this one in a very thin sheet of gold as well. And I rolled it out. Of course, I rolled it out a couple days ago. And I find, I, I wish I had made this thinner. This is pretty thin. And this is a fairly large leaf. So I think I'm going to be okay, because when I start reducing, this is going to get even thinner. I hope I'm making the right decision. I don't know. How thin is this? Let me try. I'm going to try rolling this through a thinner setting and see. Eight. Oh yeah, good deal. There's eight, and I'm gonna go through nine. All right, 
out the tore there. I'm not exactly sure why it tore, but it did. So we will just use this part and hope I have enough. And you can chase out any air pockets if you see them. Hmm. Okay, good deal. Ooh, that's nice and thin. This is what we have so far. Thin, really thin. Hope it's not too thin. Ha ha. Okay, so there's our leaf cane. Now we're going to make a second cane, which is our branch cane. And that is simply various bits of clay I have lying around. I'll even use some of the old cane there. And they're never exactly the same because they're always just chopped up gold, copper. Uh, I don't really put silver in there, but... Okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to chop, chop, chop like this and keep chopping. And I will keep chopping, but you don't have to watch me. You can see... the special technique. Okay, so I'll be back, and this will be all chopped up. We're all chopped up, you can see. Now, this is the way I make my starry night canes. It's all chopping up all, you know, different colors and cane ends and whatever you find, and, and it turns into quite a nice a textured looking cane. Now, if I if I had a lot more clay, of course, I wouldn't be doing the chop 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 with the with the blade, but I would take it to my little Oscar. But the, you see this this is enough probably for the rest of my life of a uh, branch cane because we use so little of it. All right, so I'm going to take my acrylic rod and just lightly roll I don't push too hard because the harder I push, the more the clay sticks to the acrylic rod, and I really don't want that. Okay, so. Da, da, da. Okay. Now we're going to take it to the pasta machine. But you can see what it and it looks like it looks like linoleum. It looks like gold linoleum with flecks of copper and black, and that's what it looks like. So, resetting my machine to the thickest setting, I am gonna roll through just one time. Why just one time? I don't know because it's Wednesday. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this into a tiny little slab. Mm -hmm. As I said, a little of this goes a really long way. Okay, 
So what you'll notice, the way I did it, I didn't flip any of the pieces when I reassembled. And so this side looks very choppy. This side has a stringier kind of appearance to it, longer. So I'm going to take the choppy side. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here and say, this is nothing you have to worry a great deal about. Trust me, uh, whether you use the short choppy side, whether you use the long stringy side, it's probably not going to make any difference. I'm just describing what I'm doing. But for this particular application, it's not going to make any difference. So what I did was I cut corner to corner. And now I'm just going to flip it back on itself like that. Make a nice little triangle. Okay. Now I'm going to cut this in half and just put them together again. And, and this is the way I make my zigzag cane. But I find that, I mean, maybe I don't have to do this at all. Maybe it's just habit. But this is what I do to make that branch cane. Okay, I have to confess, I mean, I just do things. Some things you do... Just do out of habit. Okay, so there we go. There it is. Okay, so let me prepare for the next step. Back again, I realized I didn't have that much preparation to do. So the next step is actually reducing this leaf because it's way large. Now, as I'm reducing, I want to tell you more stuff about scenes like this. So you can watch me reduce. It's actually pinching the ends like so. And then I twist and I pull and then I pinch and then I twist and pull and you can see that the size of the leaf is getting smaller. All right, so I will continue for a little bit because I, I want them to be, I want it to be about this size, not this size. This is still too big. Okay, so when you make scenes like this right here, uh, you're actually working from the bottom to the top. So all the things that are underneath, for instance, this wood or this stem is protruding from under that leaf. Well, of course, that was the first thing I put on the clay. So you're always building from the bottom up. In a case like these, these are very simple floral scenes and patterns. And whether you put something underneath or on top or the arrangement probably doesn't matter that much. I don't know that there are any huge mistakes that you make. Um, but that is basically the process. And every time you put a layer down, every time you put an element down, you're going to roll it into your background clay. You don't arrange them all and then and then uh, roll them all in at the same time. No, you're working in layers and each layer, each component is integrated into the background as you work. Okay, so let's see. What is the size now? And it's very close. Close, close, close. Okay, so I'm going to cut here. There it is. There she is. Okay. 
Now let's say you want to make something that's very long and thin like that. Well, it's really just a matter of taking your leaf and flattening it out and stretching and pulling like this, you see, from here to here. Okay, so let's begin. Here is my painted sheet. I'm going to take a piece off of my branch cane and I'm gonna roll it through the pasta machine. Three, four, okay, so that's, eh, we'll stick with four. Oops, it's alive. There's one. It's so shiny. Um, okay, you guys. I mean, uh, this is, I can see it fine. But I have a feeling the camera's not showing it as fine. So I prepared this before. So I'm switching. We're going to build on this sheet so you can actually see. I will complete that one later. All right, I just have to roll this through the pasta machine because. Okay. Yeah, that's just too hard to see. This will be much easier for you to see. Okay, so I've rolled this through setting number two. Why? I don't know. I just did. Uh, what it, What you don't want is you don't want to make it too thin. Because then it is much more difficult to organize and to create. To integrate the slices and becomes much more difficult. So make this a medium thickness or even toward the thick side, if you err at all. All right, this is gonna be better. You'll be able to see it. Okay, so. Because what good is a tutorial if you cannot see what's going oops on okay so i've just put several pieces down none of them are overlapping so slowly i will roll over you don't want to do this too fast you know if you exert too much pressure, you'll actually pull the stem or the leaf right off the clay. And you don't want to do that, but you want to embed the clay, the applied clay into the background. So you're going to feel it a lot. And the goal is kind of not to feel it at all. Okay, so let's apply more. 
And sometimes I twist it too. So you just build up the branches like this with just more and more and more. Oops. I'm gonna move over, I seem to. So just build up your branch structure. Okay, so I have a little bit more work to do. You've seen the way I've done this much of it. So I'm going to cut and I'll be back when I've finished. I'm back and here is the basic structure of the branch. Okay, now in spots of, like here, for instance, if there's too much black or too much of something you don't want, then just take another little piece and put it on and blend it in. So literally, you're kind of painting. You really are painting with your cane slices. Okay, uh, I find this technique very forgiving in that way. You can make adjustments, small adjustments, pretty much at any point along the way, as long as you haven't completely rolled something in. Like if I put a leaf down and it was in the wrong place, well, it's just in that place because I can't take it. Okay, so I talked a little bit about making it thick enough, but thick enough to embed in and withstand the sanding. But if it gets too thick, it gets sloppy and the leaf will get big. So you're kind of walking a fine line here. So this is the thickness. Let me see if I can, if you can see that. I think it's less than one millimeter. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the light and put it out. Like so. Okay. Now, I didn't manage to get the whole leaf. So at the base, you can see, it's probably not going to make any difference. All right, so there's one leaf, and I will take and roll lightly at first, because really you can just pick the whole thing up. And integrate that leaf into the background. Okay. I may layer another leaf on top. So remember, the first leaves you put on are the ones that are most likely in the background underneath other elements. 
This is actually a good one to start with because I don't think you're going to make any mistakes. I think it's kind of hard to make mistakes at this point. Now we're introducing more clay. So what will happen is when you put a new leaf in, and I'll, I'll do it right here, I think. And I'll show you what happens to, what happens to the branch. Makes perfect sense. Okay, so let me put that right there. I don't know, I guess you can't really see it too well, but this clay pushed the, um, pushed the branch in. And of course it's going to, because the clay has to go somewhere. You're pressing it, you're smoothing it, you're rolling it into this background, and the background is moving around it and under it. So there are limitations as to the number of leaves you ever, or additional elements like flower petals or leaves that you want to put on. Because at some point you start building up so much clay that the leaves and things underneath are going to get distorted. I hope that makes sense. All right, so now I'm just going to reduce this just a bit because these leaves are rather large. If you look at the way they're going down. So I'm just going to reduce and I just did. Okay, so I think I'm going to put this one on top of that one. I like it. But you see the introduction of this clay over the top. See what happened to this leaf? It's just curving a little. I think I can straighten it out by taking my rod and rolling it back into position like so. So this is a little bit, it's splooshing out a little bit less, but you can still see originally that leaf underneath was going, was arcing nicely. And now it's, it comes up and then it gets wide and then it gets thin again. And that's that phenomenon I was telling you about. You can really only put so many layers of elements on top of each other. Okay, so let me continue just in various places. It's going to be a rather sparse arrangement, not going to be a tremendous amount of overlapping. So I'll be back. Here we are. The leaves are all on. I wish you guys could feel this because uh, 
this is what I would advise. When you're working on this, uh, something like it, I want you to close your eyes and run your fingers across the surface. And you shouldn't feel anything. It should feel perfectly smooth because your fingertips will tell you more than your eyes will tell you about the surface of the clay. Not sure what I'm gonna do with this. This ended up not being a very spare piece. I just kept putting leaves on. Okay, so here was the original size. Ta-da. Then I reduced it down to ta -da, this size, so it's a bit smaller. And then I thought, well, I need even smaller ones, so I went smaller than that. So just reduce as you need to. So I, as I said, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. If I do come up with something, then I will certainly show you. Okay, so if you have any questions, um, you can write them in the comments, and I will try to answer them. I have to admit, so I, I don't go very often, <coughs> pardon me, to the comments. Um, I have to do that more. There are so many things I have yet to learn. Anyway, if you liked it, then please like it. Evidently, Bettina told me, she said, I have to say, please like it if you liked it. And subscribe if you want to subscribe. So that's the tutorial for today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Until we meet again. Bye. Well, as usual, I said goodbye and I'm back again. You must be thinking she won't go away. Well, I will eventually, but I just wanted to show you. In the original sample, I had these little berries. See these little berries? It's just red. It's just a bullseye cane with red, thin sheet of black, orange, thin sheet of black, reduced really tiny and I've got a berry. So I like those as just little accent things, particularly in something like this that is only leaves. So I put my berries in, put my berries. But I also wanted to show you the difference between the two. Remember initially I talked about this cane as opposed to this cane. So this is what we have. I think generally speaking, these are better defined than these. I mean, as I'm looking at this whole thing through my uh, the camera on my phone, I think that definitely these uh, stand out more. They're, they're overall brighter, even though that yellow-green is a very bright color. So I just wanted to show you these two things. And, you know, you can decide what you like and what which you prefer and how you want to proceed chalky sort of gray blue green or that very bright yellow lime green okay now i am seriously leaving okay thanks again bye